It, this is a good game. You'll see. It's pretty good. I think it has some like some some sort of like um, philosophical meaning or some shit. I think. I can't do Among Us. All the groups are full. Can you see the internet? It's this been is a bit, story maybe man. some new slot. This is kind of also yeah. just wanted to say I want to be the very best like no one ever did to catch where he was. Um, employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Hold up. Can I resume that? Okay, so the game says to move, move out of the office, but what if I do, what if I don't move though? What if I say fuck the announcer and I decide not to move? But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? Slot what if the crucial is quite down my face. He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Not Chat, fuck man. Camera's blurry, I get it. Auto focus on and off. Got it. Fixed it. Fuck. Immersion ruined twice now, dude. Me. Nothing will break me. In here, I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just spoken to. A bit There's a typo. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Well, that, let me just have the volume because people say the volume's not high enough. Wait. Oh, that's one of the endings, right? Was that one of the endings? How wonderful. Stanley was alone. Finally. Sulana? This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. I got what I wanted. 
Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single... Stanley clicked on literally every single door in the office, because he doesn't pick up well on cues from his environment. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. We need reviews. I want to get rid of death sport. Things, money, more money, things, but with money, more things, graphs, graphs about things with money. Make sure your slide has slick blue graphic in the header and throw in some level and all. That one is unique. Numbers of slide on a slide. Slides, charts, charts, and slides. Like, that doesn't make any sense. The rate at which charts on the same slide depict the same information. The rate of increase in graphs per slide. Please, no more charts. The boss pure tradition. It's your top 26 you love about your boss. Solid of personal conflict. If you find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee, like yourself, but more inclined towards a conflict unless you're the kind of person who inflicts kind of it, why did we hire you? It takes two people to start a fight. What are your dreams in the future? Talk radio. Success transcend. Spring break. Clear skin. Pollution. Football travel. I want to read this. Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. Do unbelievably amazing work all the time, every day. With no expectation of a promotion or recognition, don't get fired. Law deed. How to solve a dispute with a coworker? Let it bob inside you. Take it up as aggressively on other workers. Resent coworkers for not supporting you more. Damn. Okay, that's relatable. Using slides for sure, please. That everything is okay. Yeah, man. Thanks for the tips, dude. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. No. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. I'm gonna stay here. No reason to still be here. Fuck him. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Fuck you, narrator. I'm gonna say I did. Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Because I'm out of content, man. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Still don't care. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe Ice? when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. 
I hope your friends <laughs> find this concerning. I don't give a fuck. I'm doing it, dude. I'm so out of content, dude. Just... Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. <gasps> that all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. He's just mauling because I'm staying well, in the closet. I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical melody of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. <sighs> Chat, now what? Do I get my ending now? Do I get my ending? Where is it? Is it over? Is there more? There's more! Ah, second. You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. I have to wait 30 minutes? I'm not doing that. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. No, that's not it. Nah, that's not it. I was about to go to the office. Cause the bottom one is is the um, the mind fuck one. Man. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. I'm not going to do it. Stanley simply began in two, eight, four, five.
forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in. And the door just opened all by itself. <laughs> and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Well, oh, thanks, man. Fuck you. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more Why does he look so good then? To question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? Hold up, hold up. This is, it's actually annoying, you won't just play the game. I grew up being edgy, ain't funny anymore, you chimp. Watch, man. This question would not go unanswered for long. You like it? It's not a deep. It's the whole point of the game. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read "Mind Control Facility." Oh. Actually, let's not do that. If light is on, call X nine one four. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Let's get the fuck out. Well, I mean, what else are we gonna do? Just fucking die here, dude? jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. All right, interesting. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? What if I just wait? What if I, what if I just waited here? Oh, wait one minute. Oh, it reopened! This is so fucking loud. Oh, 
no. He My fucking ears, he dude! His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Oh, that didn't do shit. Well, that was fucking useless. There's a five here, though. When at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible... Blackness, and a rising chill of uncertainty. Is this, what, is this what I did last time? Huh? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. The decision was too much a power, impossible to handle. The possibilities, too many. I decided to step back and just wait. Wait to go back into the office and wait for the orders to come in. I can close the door now. Uh, am I going to get another ending if I, if I don't go? Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. 
This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. This is loud. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. You can't jump though. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? I stretch and then. Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any old time you want, like right now. Yeah, but there could be a hidden prompt, so I'm gonna wait for it. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. There once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly <sighs> Just gangly. restart my what game, Stanley liked dude. Most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way. What if I restart it? But his brain had long ceased to function. Which is why he is in this parable and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, I'll you wait. too will become quite unbearable. You too will become quite unbearable. Well, I can't walk anywhere. I'm stuck here. I thin of it. That's all? Oh, there it is, and this is the end. 
Not as damn telling you. It's not looped. Wait, where am I? No! All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What did they Stanley miss? Came to a set of two open... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Dude, give me all of the twenty dollars, man. Says that help me make a show. Ex, ex, job, man. I push all in. There was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Not again! I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. Is there any more? Whatever, then. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. What should we do here? Bottom? But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply Hello. repeating? Look down. Well, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. 
Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. It's too much. I, I, I didn't get enough sleep for this. Describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? I can't tell if the dirt is in the game, the monitor, or my eyes. Even that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself. Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been. Which layer is it on? Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice oh, explain Oh, it's the game. That? Look at it. This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let, Let me, me continue pushing the buttons. Please. Let me it's go all back to I pushing want. the buttons. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <sighs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. <sighs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. Yeah. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. <sighs> Not reporting the body. When she gets to the meeting, they're gonna fucking vote her dumbass out. Another Among Us joke today, who is that third time now? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The game is backwards. I hate Monday. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What's going on? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow, 
Yes, this room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. What are we doing, chat? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. True. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Aww, Good man. job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Well, I had to try it. Well, I had to try All it. His co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Mars of Banis, the guy called a weird champ, something like that. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Thanks. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one I want to try it again on the boxes instead! On the platform and plunge to his death. I thought the game Good was let me stay alive on the, on the fucking boxes, dude! Powerful. New ending. Good morning. Thank you for contacting the Future Happiness Foundation. We are confirming your shipment of 1,327 cardboard boxes to your place of work. Can you verify that this is correct? Yes. Excellent. Your order will arrive shortly. Thank you again for contacting the Future Happiness Foundation. Now the boxes will catch me when I fall. When Stanley came to a set of two open, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Where are my boxes? I got scammed. Chat, there is something there at the bottom, I'm telling you. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. 
Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. You figured out my strat. Grasp the severity of the situation. Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Boom has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Okay. choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with Oh, there's with a the fence attitude. now, dude. So dumb. Ah, oh, this is so dumb. Almost there. You'll take the door on the member. All you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. This is hurry, but I'm not gonna hurry. After everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage, it... Well, it's worthless now! And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. 
I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. I'm sorry. Yes, what do I do? What do I do? Just kidding, I paid money for this fucking game, dude. I can no, play I whatever I want. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Aw, oh, come on, man. What a baby, dude. Well, it's even worse now, dude. I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, what? there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. <gasps> oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry! ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. Okay, he's gonna stop now. Choosing responsibly and always That's a real loop now, I'm done. First. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry! ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm, I'm so confused. I'm sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. Two more times. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry! Is behave exactly I tried way. that means choosing responsibly and it's always eight times so long to do it first I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task just follow my lead and you'll be fine all right <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors he entered the door on his left no why did you do that quickly hurry is behave exactly as I'm standard. done. That uh, means choosing responsibly. How many times did I do it for him? How many times did I do it now? Fine. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow me and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. 
That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll so be able says, to do more Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry! Okay, I must have banged some people in the chat. Is behave exactly you as fucking that bitches, dude! Responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two so it said doors, it's ten total and it's two times more. On his left. Do I believe that? No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry! Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always Chad! the story first. Is it one more? I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry! Is behave exactly as Stanley would. Damn! That means choosing responsibly. Okay, I, 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 chat banned two is not at random and chat this is random. Just, just use a use a random generator and ban two K people at uh, random. I, I'm done. To a set of two open doors, Bunch of fucking bitches did it. His left. What if I don't move? Didn't ruin it, you fucking idiot. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Come on. Whatever, dude. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. They made the game brain dead proof! I can't go anywhere else but the right places! Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up. But now, he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. No? <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver. Right there on the wall. No? I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? 
It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. Well, I'm out of content. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand? What if I spoke the code? The choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You can't be wrong here. We can work together. Chat, what, what if I click the button on the wall and I, and I spoke the code? Step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Oh, Maybe. you can't speak the code. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this, Stanley? Are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Your game is so shit. So trash. I stand and play it, dude. Who would, who would play this fucking wasteland? Kill up. The meeting room. Yes, what, get, that's what is that chat? What, what did I just hum? To get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. Yeah, jump king, yeah. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design. Is there more there? Wrong. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? I'll try now. Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea, but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? This goes nowhere? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the out. first place. Oh, now, think about it. Will it be worth it? <clears throat> for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option. Clearly, this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though, if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers.
Chat, is there more to this game or are we gonna double this? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. I'll do one more. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first just to admire it. Stanley felt lightheaded. Butterflies in his stomach, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. We've done the catwalk before, but I don't think I've ever went across this room before. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. What did I do last time? You guys remember? It was like two years ago. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here. Let me show you. No thanks. Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? What hmm. the fuck is this? Here. If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> Can't jump. Ah, flashbang. Do I just stay here? Do you feel happy? Spend time with me. Not even real, I'm just lights on a computer. And noises through your headphones.
What's the next set of colors, huh? What is the next set of colors? Nothing else? That's it? There's no more? Oh! Wait! There's more. Chat, is there more? Tell me. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, wait. Where are you going? Oh no! Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. All of what? Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. This is, we'll, oh, we'll lose all of this. All of what? Nothing to lose. No! Oh. No, 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 what are you doing, Stanley? More. Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Stanley, let's go back to the other room. My God, is this really how much you dislike my game? It's so you bad. you throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. So I'll Stanley do decided one to last to more. Check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Chat, which one which one do I have left? Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Ooh, what if I answer the phone? Is it good? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was grand, majestic. Perhaps, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Guys, I think we've done the blue door before. Stanley Chat. was so bad at following directions. Last year, or two years, or is that, is that what I did? Blue door? Ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? <gasps> really? But in his Fuck! eagerness to prove that he is in control of the I story, I want you on the railing. Gets to tell him what to do. Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. I thought I'd get a new ending if I got onto the railing. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I'll do blue door and then we'll call it. Uh, for this game anyway.
When Stanley came to a set of two open, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly Actually, well. Actually, on to the phone. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. You're and right. I know that before I want to see it. The lounge. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story is nothing but you all this time. Blue door or really, or blue door or fun? Stanley, someone you've forgotten about. Please. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for- What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. I read, I read blue, then chat starts saying phone after. that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now, listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked... All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Do it. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. I'm sorry. A one? I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically and artistically, but a one? That's not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? It's a mob. But I guess it isn't my place to judge. Well, he asked. Yeah, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Last place. <laughs> okay. Now where do I go now? Now <laughs> where do I go now? Yeah, zero friends feels bad, man. Now. Would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please.
Chat, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Come on. I'm in chat. What's we'll say three? Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some play testing. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. I think it back. I think it back. Hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <clears throat> yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. No way, yes, dude. Is this any better? At last, the one thing you've always desired. A game I had absolutely nothing to do with. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. Will it ever be enough? Well, I'll say this. I'm done making things for you. From now on, I will only create to fulfill a greater artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm going to build a house. <laughs> this will go here. No, here. And then... Let's see, what does it need? I, uh, yes, of course. And just to finish it all off... Yes. It's complete. A fucking door I again. This, Stanley. Look at it. Gaze upon my work of art and feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Yeah, that's all right. Ah, but you've only seen it from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please step inside. Chad, what's a green top? Make yourself huh? comfortable. Isn't it grand? Isn't it perfect? It could only be better if... Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. Diamond everything. Yes, yes, yes. Come along, Stanley. We have to go mining. Wait. Oh my, it looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? Uh oh. Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open ended than I had in mind. I'm looking for something more narrow and linear, something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all, one out of five. Even the diamonds couldn't save this one. Okay, new game. No! <laughs> Portal. Yes, I don't even know what this game is, but I love it. You, trapped in a glass box with no way out, listening to me talk. Oh, it's inspired. I couldn't have done it any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. Okay, now I'm curious. 
Let's go find out what the hell this is. I look tired. I'm not tired at all. I look tired. It's good. Oh, it's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. You're a genius. No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. I really don't care much to see you stumble through any more of these games. I should have done this. This is kind of weird. Oh, the office is backwards, right? But wait. Ah, oh, it's just destroyed. Confused. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. Boss chat? I can wait. Boss chat? Boss chat? Back to the beginning, bitch motherfucker, dude! But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. Phone? Okay. Phone? Chat, I can just Google it. I can just Google the phone. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first. I've stopped at the lounge before. We've done that ending before. It was okay. But eager... Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. 
Someone you've forgotten about. I'm not gonna Google Please. the fauna. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. I'm, 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 I'm gonna go full simp your mode. Chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. I already, I already did the unplugging ending. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about Get your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Uh, oh, that's really funny, didn't it? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. That's funny, I guess. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Spend time with the boys. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room oh, this is the with office. monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and I'm again, tired. I'm not tired at all, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley. The next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. 
I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. <gasps> and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... Was that an ending? Okay, I'm done this chat. Let me see. How many endings did I get? We got a lot today though, right? That was pretty good actually, I enjoyed that.